The purple lady. They call her. The purple lady with a black star? Oh, this could be a really fun run, or a really short run. Not sure which yet. Well, it's not going to be a four elite act one. That's probably for the best. I really appreciate that we have Slime Boss at the end. That means our main focus this act is just to deal with the elites, and hopefully the Slime Boss will follow. I'm not sure if I want to go to this initial store. I do want to go to this fire, upgrade Eruption, and then fight this elite. Um, but I'm not sure about the rest. Black Star means we're getting extra relics from elites, so as long as we can kill just a few, we'll be showered in rewards. Just do the Burning Elite, get Wing Boots, and it all follows from there. Wing Boots would be an incredible relic to find during this run. Whether we find it Act 1, Act 2, or Act 3, what the heck? Ow? Like I said, could be a really short run. Number to remember, Eruption plus two strikes is 35? 24 plus 9? Yes. No, 33. Excuse me. 33 damage, which is more health than you have. 33. Yeah. Remember that number, because if you have to calculate it, you're screwed. Interesting choices here. I actually really like a uh, follow-up as a first attack for a Watcher deck that doesn't have the starting miracle. It's like a strike, but better yet, it's a free strike. That's beautiful. Third Eye is also a very good card in the common pool. really like the block and scry combo, but right now I think we need an energy efficient attack. Follow-up is it. love that we got a potion and it love even. much with so little. Is this Eruption Vigilance, or do I do something fancier? Can't quite finish the, the bird here. I don't have the energy for it. I think I'm going to try the Eruption Vigilance line. Let's see what that does for me. Good to me. <clears throat> Beautiful. We are able to get through the fight without too much difficulty there. Crush joints. A lot more awkward, actually, when you don't have your miracle from your starting relic. I've come to like this card quite a bit, but that really is all dependent on having the miracle. I think Crescendo could be nice. Although it's less nice with the Eruption upgraded. What about Foreign Influence here? Foreign Influence lets us look at three attacks of any color, Watcher, or one of the other characters, or Colorless even. And choose a card, an attack card, to add to our hand. Very notably, this card upgrades to create a free version, at least on the turn you play it, which can be really powerful if combined with the two or three cost cards of other characters. Who is it said that who that said take the first wrath card you see? I do believe that is something I'm I'm guilty of saying. But that's what eruption really is. Oh, you do want another one. But I also want good damage. I think this foreign influence is gonna do the job just nicely. Feeling pretty ready to fight an elite already, quite frankly. Uh, we just want to upgrade for an influence first. Do I take a shop to remove one of our defend cards? Get ahead on the starter card removals? Or do I go to events and essentially try to do the same thing, maybe? Let's roll the dice with the events. There's a lot of removal events in Act 1. It's also this fight. Hello. There's actually not a half-bad... Uh, 
energy potion there. So, 9 plus 12 plus 16. That's a kill. Thanks for an influence. A potion and a tantrum. Okay, there's the first wrath card I see. It's a pretty good one, too. Three damage three times, puts us into wrath. And then goes back to the draw pile. Very, very good with Flex Potion, especially. There's maybe some argument for an empty mind, but I don't think it's as good if we don't have the Tantrum in the first place. Let's grab that Tantrum. And I'll take another event. It's a merchant, so we ended up going to the shop anyway, which had a Tantrum in it, by the way. That's pretty funny. I'm still not sure when the right time for an early Devaform is in Slay the Spire. I know it's not here. A very expensive card. The idea is that you use Devaform to help play a, a fairly expensive deck or a deck that can scale its card draw. Never ever Deva. And that would definitely be not be worth uh, adding in place of a card remove for sure. I think we want to simply remove a card and nothing else. We could maybe make an argument for dramatic entrance. But yeah, it's going to be remove defend and not a dang thing otherwise. That's all I wanted to do with the shop in the first place. Yes, if, if you've boss swapped into Snekowai, that's an entirely different story. And then Devaform is an amazing card. You have Snekowai, period, Devaform is great. Can also be very, very good if you have multiple vaults in your deck. Or even just one starts to make it pretty good. And this is going to be my choice of first upgrade. I, I really want that generated card to be free. Especially while we're on three energy with no miracle, so that it to do the big damage. All right, this would be the time for an influence. If you were going to make a really powerful card from another character to end this fight, now is the time. Ooh, dagger spray. If I'm willing to invest flex potion, that's it. Yeah, let's just use the Flex Potion. That's basically an Immolate, right? With plus 5 Strength and Wrath Stance. It's 18 by 2. Dang. The damage. Oh man. And what a pair of relics we get. Pantograph heals us at every boss fight. And Fossilized Helix prevents the first instance of damage in each fight. Uh, this is going to be one of the silly runs, I, th I think is what that tells us. Definitely like a Fear No Evil now that we have multiple Wrath entries. Can't We already did the signature move thing. We actually made it work last run, too. That's pretty cool. The bonk. Just dead. It's back. Now I'll take a cut through fate though. Draw and scry and damage. <clears throat> As we get more relics, it's gonna get even better too. And we have several upgrades left this act. Beautiful. A Duvu doll. Ooh. For each curse in the deck, we now add a point of strength. Could be a reason to pick up a curse somewhere along the way. Strength making all of our attacks hit harder is just going to make this deck so much more deadly. And already we're on to something very powerful here with multi-hitting cards, with Rast Dance, and with just one point of strength that's enough to get going in a serious way. Beautiful. We'll go Tantrum first to take advantage of that strength. And we will fight these nerds. Good luck to them. Who needs to leave Wrath when you have a fossilized helix? Not me. Is 
these are all decent. I could maybe take a, take a Sanctity, but it feels pretty unnecessary. Oh, missed Hand of Greed, you're right. Dang it. How could I have been so foolish? So yeah, free Ragnarok? Anyone? Foreign influence, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, yeah. Frozen egg means all powers will be upgraded. I have to be honest, not my favorite egg, especially not on Watcher. But it does mean Rushdown Plus. Actually, never mind. That's going to be amazing. Rhythm Galaxy, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sib Club. And I will take one third eye. I like me some scry. I'll even upgrade that card. Immediately. Make it scry. Five. And we'll go one more event. Maybe try to get a curse. Maybe try to get a... Card remove. Maybe try to get something. Max health. Actually, wait. A curse. And a relic. I'm a sucker for it. Let's do it. Give me the box. Plus, how often how often do I get a chance to say, this is where you potentially consider taking the box relic from the big fish event? <clears throat> if you have a Duvu doll. If you have Scry that lets you discard the curse. These are things that can make it worthwhile. Get a bag of marbles, applying one vulnerable to enemies on turn one, and now we have another point of strength. That's pretty sweet, if you ask me. If we're going to do curse things, I'm going to need to upgrade our scry sources, I think, in order to avoid disaster. Hmm. Losing our buffer to the curse is going to be an annoying re- well, man, this Ford influence is on point. Hello, bludgeon. Actually, no, I want the Sands of Time. I'm not going to play it this turn, we're just going to keep it. Ow. Twenty-two brings you to exactly seventy-five. I don't want to do that. Slime, get crushed. Bonk. Now there's a real Ragnarok. I like it. I like it a lot. That is a lot of damage in one card. Otherwise, I'm considering energy here. I don't think we need a judgment. All of our cards kill things with 40 or less health. Take a Ragnarok. Oh my lordy. Do I take that Snekawai? Hmm. Snekawai makes the Ragnarok absolutely massive. Makes the regret hit us harder, which is a bit annoying. And means some of the other cards are less good. But the other options are a bit wonky anyway, right? Could have another Ectoplasm run, no more money, which immediately shuts off the Maw Bank. Or we could take the Tiny House, which gives us not really anything at all. So whether we're taking it because it's good or because the other options are bad, it doesn't matter. We're taking it. Right, and the shops are pretty early. I could go to this one, though. How many elites can I get at most? That's the real question, of course. We got a black star. I want the relics. So we've got either one, two, three here. One, two, three here, or one, two, three here. In which case... No shop here either way. So if I want to shop this act, I should go to it immediately, is the answer. Or we could harvest massive gains from the mall bank and not go to a shop at all. 
Would I transform the regret given the opportunity? No, it could turn into a pain. It can definitely be worse than a regret. And we could do much better by transforming one of the other cards. I might remove it eventually if I decide it's no longer worth it. <laughs> Bye. These aren't Sneko cards. <laughs> I might have talked about the Flurry Plus otherwise, but no way. This foreign influence has been insane and will continue to be, even with Sneko Eye. 50 more gold? That's enough to make me go to that shop, I think. Or we could try Ritual Dagger Scaling. That sounds difficult and is going to make me not want to play Ragnarok. I don't want to do that. I think looking at a whole bunch of cards with Ori is going to be pretty good here. 15 cards. I also like the Lantern for energy on turn one. I also like removing a starter card, not the Regret. But I definitely like Ori here. Especially with the Frozen Egg. Any powers we see will be upgraded. We'd love a Mental Fortress or a Rushdown. Less, less so Rushdown than before. But we would still like it. Wave plus. Blasphemy? Hmm. Pretty underwhelming overall, actually. Hard to say no to... Oh, I have buffer too? I'm definitely taking Blasphemy. I am definitely taking Blasphemy. That's a pretty good reason to remove the regret, actually. Which I could do here. So, Blasphemy gives us instant Divinity Stance, which is three energy and a triple damage, with the low, low downside of literally dying the turn after you play it. The idea is that you instantly end the fight by playing another card, such as Ragnarok. But we can also prevent the death by having our buffer intact from the fossilized helix, since death is in the form of damage, and that damage will in fact be prevented. Could maybe take a Deceive Reality also. Wave of the Hand will be good for later. Even if not right now. Oh, we'll take the Lantern too. Alright, good luck to us. I'm super reading the book. Come on, come on, come on. Please, 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 please. Yes! <laughs> oh my goodness. It's spicy time. Necronomicon not only gives us another curse, but says that the first attack each turn being costing two or more is played twice. And that's that accounts for Sneko. So as long as it costs two or more, it gets played twice if it's the first time on a turn. Even if it's a strike, even if it's Tantrum, even if it's Ragnarok. The luck. I mean, sure, keep him coming. While sneaking past a group of shrouded figures, one of them approaches you. Got anything for me, friend, please? Maybe some coin? I just need somewhere to stay. I have treasures. He seems delusional, but harmless. You snatch the precious relic from his clutches and walk away. From behind you here. Have you no shame? Have you no shame? We do have some shame, but we also have some strength. Now I think the fact that we have a wave of the hand is kind of silly, but maybe we'll get some block powers or block relics better yet to work with it. All right, well, the event heavy path did successfully curse the crap out of me. Is that going to be good or bad? Only time will tell, but let me tell you, four points of strength and a Ragnarok with a Sneko Eye is going to hit pretty dang hard. Gentlemen, goodbye. 
<laughs> yes, it begins. More relics is the reward there. Study plus? Not with Snekoi, no way. With this much strength, the second tantrum is actually a pretty good idea. Yeah, let's add one more of these. One of the ways we can counteract having four curses is by adding more cards to the deck and making sure that <clears throat> the ratio of curses to real cards, quote unquote, doesn't get out of hand too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, they tried, but it didn't work out. Apparitions, oh my god. Hmm. I don't think so. With Snekoi? And a bunch of curses in the deck? I don't think so. That could be our block. What's our max health going away? I don't know. We'd really be dependent on being able to play more of multiple of them in the same turn. I I don't like it, truthfully. I don't think they're good here. Especially with all the healing we're getting. Letter opener? A little bit of area damage. I think we can take the Sapphire Key over the opener, though. It's a very trivial amount of damage. And I would like two more relics, please. Oh my god. <laughs> What are these draws, though? Hello? Singing Bowl now lets us scale our max health by skipping cards. Oh, what's that? A second Ragnarok? Yeah. Sure. Shelled Parasite. Be gone. You know, we don't even need the Divinity card. We just have Necronomicon to destroy everything. Don't fall for this rushdown. It's talk to the hand. It's 1000% talk to the hand. With two tantrums and two Ragnaroks, this card is block. And better yet, if this card costs two or more randomly, we can play it two times. Sneko, Necro, talk to the hand. Freaking get him, man. Double talk to the hand. Also, you're dead. Pennim makes the Ragnaroks hit even harder. Cloak Clasp is free block at the end of every turn. And this is free max health. This run is glorious. What is happening? Black Star First Relic is happening. And I love it. Next upgrade is the other Ragnarok. But first... Boop. Wait, that didn't even double properly. War <laughs> strength is a lot, did you know that? Ooh, another upgraded third eye. Or crush joints for vulnerable. Seems really, really unnecessary. What scry? Do we just not care about the curses? We love the curses. Curses are our dearest friend. Necronomicon Strike. Now we die. Alright. Now that we have died, the rest of the fight may resume. Napalm Shimmer, thank you so much for the full year of support. 
That's the power of the... <laughs> right? I, I forgot how this works with the relic stats. Damage prevented. 100,025. No, that's that's definitely a hundred thousand. So this is this gets played twice, right? All right. Well, see you later, champ. Thanks, Necronomicon, for absolutely destroying everybody as usual. By the way, would you like one of these cards? Genuinely difficult to choose between Devaform with Snackoi or the Vault here. Probably gonna take the Devaform, truthfully. It lets you play all the cards, and means we're not completely hosed if we don't get an energy relic from this boss reward. Is this skip to the Heartworthy? With the right draw order and the right random costs, this could absolutely beat the Heart right now. Definitely, definitely. If we, if we double talk to the Hand Plus on turn one, we just win. But if we don't do that, we might not win. All right, Choker, Cage, or Hammer feels like a very easy fusion hammer for me. We already have all the important cards upgraded. Any future powers are already going to be upgraded. And what am I going to empty Cage? Not two curses, that's for sure. Another option is Velvet Choker. Limits us to six cards per turn. Actually, not that much of a problem at the moment, but the hammer just seems free. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Just seems totally, totally free. All right, how many elites do we get in this, our final act? Four, count them, four elite. That's eight relics with Black Star. Oh boy. Here we go. This will hit a shop early on too. We'll go to this one. But I can do four elites. Sweet. You'd love to see it. Or I could take two more events. Here in Act 4. Hmm. Yeah, what about more events indeed? Events are like extra elites almost. And I don't even need the shop necessarily. You know what? Let's take some more events. Looking for the, the high rolls of sorts. We actually just instantly kill him with Necronomicon cut through fate. Off four points of strength. Oh dear lord. Ridiculous. Up into shop and still get four elites. Oh yeah, if this is one of the elites, actually. I hadn't parsed that. Yes. One, two, three, four. Yes. That is an option. I like that option a lot. So that we can go this way now. Definitely not going to trade all my money for the red mask, you stinky man. But here's one of the things we were looking for. Another relic. As long as I can kill two orb walkers. An incredibly deadly, incredibly dangerous fight. It's not an elite fight, so we don't get a bonus relic. But we do get... To kill them both on turn one. And then we get a pocket watch. We play three or fewer cards on our turn. We'll draw three more cards on the next turn. That's draw 10 with Snack OI. Empty body's not bad. I'd like a couple more ways to leave Wrath, actually, especially with random costed cards. So I'm going to take this. I still want to go to a shop? Let's go with, yeah, let's let's opt into this store. We'll do one, two, three, four.
Tantrum is just straight 40 damage. Blap. More blap. Everything's dead on turn one all the time. Easy. Don't think I want to collect here. Collect is an awkward as heck card. We already have Devil Form, which is basically doing what Collect is doing, but better. Basically. Grand Finale! <laughs> the Necronomicon doesn't even get to go off half the time. Because the first attack kills stuff with four strength. Ridiculous. What is even happening? Yeah, sure, let me draw 10 next turn. Huh. That's actually really terrible. Get him, Ragnaroks. <laughs> it's just so much damage, they all die. 10 max HP and a Lizard Tail, which will revive us to half. Now we have enough raw durability to survive the heart, no matter what. If we want a really good block card, how about a Spirit Shield? Three block per card in hand, which is, as we just established, we can draw 10 on one turn. Sure. Gonna need some block for the late game. Ah. Mental Fortress will help with that too. Strange Spoon could let us keep our cards that exhaust. Talk to the hand, blasphemy, and foreign influence. I don't think that's worth it. Oh. Our miracle's not better than 12 block, when 12 block could be the difference between keeping the helix and not keeping the helix. Uh, I actually really like the versatility of the block potion. We also have an energy potion already, so I didn't want two potions that basically did the same thing. We remove anything? Yes, I remove a strike. Actually, no, I remove a defend. Still haven't gotten rid of those. Uh, do I Centennial Puzzle? Maybe. Maybe I can remove Regret. I think now that we have three curses, it's actually very reasonable to do that. Maybe before the final battle or something. Puzzle and Helix are kind of anti-synergistic, that's true. I'm also thinking that drawing 10 cards at the start of our turn is anti-synergistic with Centennial Puzzle. A curse! Now we'll fight the uh, fight the boss, get the extra relic. That means we've got both rare relics from events plus another eight relics from elites. Ten relics this act from combats. Incredible. Just incredible. <laughs> GG. Unceasing top, that's not it, unfortunately. We're never going to have no cards in our hands. Ever. Unless I fiend fire from Porn Influence. That's about it. Oh yeah, and there's two more relics here as well. Warpaint upgrading two random skills, Defend and Vigilance, and 
the boat thingy for 10 blocks. We're officially on the second page of relics with so many left to go. If you manage to exhaust the pool of relics for any category, be it a common, uncommon, rare, whatever, and attempt to generate a new relic, then you'll get what's called a um, circlet. It's a placeholder relic that's so the spire will generate. Calibers. It's almost impossible to um, to get a circlet in a normal run of Slay the Spire. There's just enough relics that you'll really never run out. Uh, for example, the relic pool is large enough. You could fill the relic bar entirely with just rare relics and still have one or two left. Okay. All right. Well, I eat my words. Go forth, unceasing top. Do work for me. Oh, wait, no, Necronomicers. Never mind. You tried, unceasing top. You really tried. Mega Prep is here for more cards on turn one. Hourglass is here for a little bit of damage. And Max HP are here. We have both bag relics. I mean, we pretty much have every relic at this point. You kill Ma on turn two. Ooh, meditate. Meditate gets cards back from the discard pile at their current cost too. So we can meditate a zero cost or two cost Ragnarok and reap full advantage there. Beautiful. Will Nemesis make it to turn two? Maybe. Results unclear. And like, probably not. Dead. The scroll bar, my god. Can only happen if you get a potion drop from the Burning Elite with Black Star. You get a scroll bar on the rewards. You also get a meal ticket and a dream catcher, neither of which are going to do anything, quite frankly. Actually, wait, I have a fusion hammer. The Dreamcatcher totally will do stuff. We're going to get bonus card rewards from this. Uh, one bonus card reward in Act 4, specifically. And an Omniscience lets us play any card in the draw pile two times. And exhausts it. A beautiful card with a Sneko Eye. Into Fall. Losing Deva Form, Empty Body, or Strike. See you later, Strike. Good day. Omni to get rid of the regret. The galaxy brain plays. All right, very important that I don't use Blasphemy this turn. Even though I have the buffer, the regret is in hand, and that would be a disaster. Unless, hold on. Unless I were to instantly win by omnisciencing Ragnarok. Which would then play three times. But only needs to play two times. Get more max health and scales, and maybe a rush down. But what about just more scry? Just more scry. 97 max HP. Don't forget to recall. It'd be a shame to lose this run to forgetting that. And now, we donk. Against the Awakened One. Could blasphemy this turn, but there's not really a whole lot of reason to do so. 
don't get to do anything with it. Let's just pocket watch. Forty-four. Actually, I'm allowed to play this tantrum. Okay, I will. Thanks to the cloak glass. It's casually ending in turn in wrath. Because I knew I could. That's pretty silly. that uh, empty body, though, don't I? This turn, I do. Six damage. Okay, it's one cost. Good. We play tons of weekend, we deal with the minions, and we got our important powers in play. Now we have double talk to the hand, and we're invincible. It's that simple. We're actually invincible. So the bird is like super dead? If I want it to be. Get him. here to spoil my fun, but what if I can just blast me and win now? This would be 30 times 6 times 2, 30 times 12 is 360 damage. That's a lot of damage. Dang. GG Awakened One. Next stop, Donu and Dekka. Can they stand a chance? I kind of doubt it. Hand vigilance, strip the artifact layers, don't accomplish anything else. That's fine. Here's my buffer, too, that's also fine. That's why we have 97 hit points, after all. My omniscience Ragnarok, it's gonna be the spiciest freaking Ragnarok ever. Actually, wait, math. There's four. Oh, yeah, that's like way too much damage. Does Blast Me Omni Ragnarok kill? Oh my god, lord, does it ever. Yes. Uh, I think it actually... Hold on. In fact... I don't even think we need it. Get him. Yes! Exaxes. GG. 
Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of this overkill. You prime your stick with four points of strength and then attack ten million times, twenty-nine eighteen. What? That's a ludicrous score. <laughs> We're getting a time bonus, quick. We gotta finish this run in the next 12 minutes. This could easily be a 4,000 point run, yes. Easily. Uh, what's base max HP for Watcher? I don't know if it counts the down. 62 or 67? Either way, 97 is plenty. Do you get a bonus for having 100 or more max health? No, you get a bonus for increasing your max health by 30 above your starting health. That's the actual uh, coding. It's for, for gaining 15 max health and for gaining 30 max health relative to your starting position. And we have exactly that already. Mirroring talk to the hand seems like a good idea. You know I'll get more points, though, if I mirror the Ragnarok. Actually, wait, what if I mirror a curse? Oh, that's even more points. You're right. The most points is mirroring a curse. It gives us a point of strength, and it gets us to five curses, which is a special score bonus in Slay the Spire. So I'm going to do something real weird here. Dolly's Mirror on a Sender's Bane. How often do you say that's the play? Not very often. Give me another Ragnarok also. And then... I think that's all we needed. No rush, no rush. No, there is a rush. I'm sorry, sir. I've got Spires to slay. Last two relics are tomorrow and ink bottle. We've got half an additional relic bar filled up. And I'll go to 99 max HP. All right, it's heart fighting time. Here goes. Us versus one giant beady boy. We got a two cost talk to the hand on turn one and we drew omniscience on turn one. This is over, chat. This is over. Double the talk to the hand. Double the Devaform. Don't play the Tantrum. Putting Spire is easy when you have every relic. Well, uh, this turn's not that great, but that's what, uh, that's what buffer's for, I suppose. There's also Blasphemy here. That seems like a really, really bad idea. A few times. Let's go. The Blampening. Well, that seems silly. I would like back one of those two-cost Ragnaroks, please. I could have scribed there, actually. a million weaken. Twenty-four turns a week for you. Also, all of the curses. Like 
all of the energy, too. Heck, that's a great turn. You're so dead, Heart. You've got no chance. Mr. Hart. You unlucky son of a gun. You had no chance this run. I'm sorry. But today's my day. GG. You spanky boy. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.